Yeah, so tonight we're gonna be talking about what new streamers need to know once they become affiliated. You might think that, you know, you get your 50 followers, you get your 3.0 average, and now you can just keep doing what you're doing. But this is actually a lot you have to do when you make affiliate. There's a lot you have to go through. There's a lot you have to set up. everybody doing today uh, welcome to the channel i am your stream guide morphine looks morphine is it looks the best stream guide ever it looks <laughs> it looks great uh remind me <laughs> thank you um your stream does look great so uh, one thing i wanted to mention to people this is not related to any stream guide type stuff but you notice that when my starting screen if you're here early uh it said overlay by uh joe cantwell photo and you can see a banner on the bottom. He is also a member of the Discord. He is a moderator here. Slip7 is awesome. And he made this whole new overlay for me. It looks fantastic. He is very talented. So definitely hit him up. If you need something, I highly recommend him. He does a great job. Let me transition that. There we go. In order to see all of your new affiliate settings, what you want to do is go down to settings we're going to go in two different options we're going to go in settings and we're going to go in viewer rewards you need to tell twitch how you want to get paid what that payout method is like you have to read through their agreement and accept their agreement and then you have to go through all this stuff here which we're going to go through mostly line by line when you go into affiliate onboarding this is going to tell you the four major steps that you have to do all the other stuff i'm going to go over tonight is optional but it's going to be definitely something you're going to want to do because it, it really helps you create that, that community, that, that sense of engagement with everybody that is viewing. All right. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go through your payout registration. So what this is doing is you're setting up all of the information that Twitch needs to know about you in order for you to be able to make money. And where do you, you know, where do they deposit the money? Do they send you a check? Do you do direct deposit? How do you want that check? The other thing you're going to want to understand when you go through that is that while you might make, you might get a sub tonight, right? right? When you're streaming, you might get some bits. You don't actually get any of that money until you hit a hundred dollars, but it's not even the moment you hit a hundred dollars. The way Twitch works is they look at your account on the last day of the month. And they say, okay, does this person have a hundred dollars in their payout right now? If you do, on the 15th of the next month, they send you a check. So you're going to get it, you know, depending on how far away you are from where they mail it, 17th, 18th, 19th, whatever. So that's how it works. So if you were at $99.99 on the last day of April, you are not going to get a check. All you need to do is make a little bit more money. And then at the end of May, you'll have crossed that $100 threshold. And then they will send you a check in the middle of June. The next thing you need to go over is your Twitch affiliate agreement. Now, this is all of the policies and procedures that you have to agree to in order to continue on with this. One of the biggest things, one of the biggest complaints, concerns that I hear people come to me about is, hey, Twitch says that they own my likeness or they own my brand to an extent. And, and that's true. So what they're saying now is that you, anything that you do on their platform, anything you stream on their platform, they can feel free to use that however they want, whenever they want. Now, if you aren't comfortable with that, I don't know if you'd realize that while you, when you hit that 3.0 average and the 50 followers, you were automatically sent an affiliate contract to sign. Nobody is reviewing. It's just automatic. However, you don't have to sign it. There was somebody in uh, another Discord admin, Pancakes and Beer Gaming, who chose not to sign it for a while because he was concerned about what Twitch would own of him. He eventually decided that he would go ahead and sign it, but that is a legitimate concern. You know, if you don't, if you are, if you are uncomfortable with how Twitch might use your likeness, then think about it, do a little bit of research. I think it's okay, but you can go ahead and, and, uh, and do a little bit of research on that. 
another thing that you need to be aware of, and this doesn't apply to everybody, but if you were multi-streaming up until the point you got to affiliate, Twitch has in their terms of their agreement for affiliates, another thing that you need to be aware of, and this doesn't apply to everybody, but if you were multi-streaming up until the point you got to affiliate, Twitch has in their terms of their agreement for affiliates that you're not supposed to do that anymore. You're not supposed to take anything you record on Twitch and send it to another platform, either at the time you're streaming it or when you're done, for I believe 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours after you, after it airs on Twitch. Just be careful of that and you won't have too many problems. And then the last two things are again, are just about money and your tax status and how you actually want your, your payout. So those are the major things that you have to set up once you become affiliate. As I mentioned before, there's change payout method. If you don't, if you at, said you wanted checks, you said you want direct deposit and you changed your mind, you would go in here and do it. This is the actual affiliate agreement. If you want to refer to it after you get done, there is a lot to read in here. I know how we all are about contracts, but I would recommend that you read through it just so you know that you're not going to do anything to violate your terms of service with Twitch. So that's about some of the legal stuff and the payment stuff. Now we get into a little bit more, you know, of a community building kind of thing. First section we have here are about your subscriptions. So this is your subscription. So you can change the name of it if you want. Going down, we'll skip emotes for just a second and badges. So these are a few options you can toggle on or off. Add free viewing. So everybody knows that when you become affiliate or become an affiliate and you subscribe, someone subscribes to your channel that they don't get to watch, they don't have to watch ads anymore. But did you know that you can change that? You could actually make people watch ads even after they subscribe. Don't do that. It's kind of messed up. But yeah, a multiplayer ad free viewing allows subscribers to watch your content on your channel. Multiplayer ad free. Okay. Um, ignore slow mo, subscriber only chat, subscriber only archives. So the one thing I'm going to caution you against is don't turn on subscriber only archives, in my opinion, because unless you are a giant streamer, people aren't always going to watch your stream when you're live. And if you don't allow non subscribers to watch your VODs, then how are they going to know what your stream is like? Right? So my advice, keep this turned off subscriber only archives subscriber only chat is up to you. But if you have like one or two, two subscribers, you're going to be kind of limited in your chat. And as a new affiliate, you are still in growth mode. You're still in growth mode. So don't turn on sub only chat until you have a ton of subs where it makes sense for you. Right, going back up to the two I skipped. First, we have a moat. A moat are something that actually draw a lot of people to be able to, to, get, to get to affiliate. And yeah, it's kind of fun. What you have to do is you go into this emote page and then as a new affiliate, you have five uh, emotes that you can add. Three for your tier ones, one for your tier two, one for your tier three. The more you grow, the more subs that you get, sub points that you earn and you get a point from every sub, you gain additional subscriber slot, uh, emote slots. When you upload emotes, one thing that people also don't realize is that they are not active immediately. Twitch reviews every single emote that every single person uploads manually to make sure that it falls within their terms of services. They evaluate every single one of them and it takes a few days, maybe a week or so before it gets back to you. The next thing down from these are from your subscriber emotes are your bit tier emotes. So when people donate bits, it starts calculating that up, right? And when they reach a thousand point threshold, the 5,000 point threshold and the 10,000 point threshold, they get access to additional emotes that they can use. There's your bit tier emotes, your subscriber emotes. Let me go back. And now we're going to go down to the bits and cheering. So you can define the num the minimum number of bits to cheer and the minimum bits for your emotes. People typically leave these at one. And then we have bit tier badges. And so this is basically saying, you know, when people cross additional thresholds, in addition to the emotes that you're getting, there are different things you can do. You can turn off these badges if you wanted to. I'd love to get to 5 million bits. That would be pretty awesome. But yeah, so these are the badges you get as people get to different levels. So there is your bits and sharing. But now you have community support and recognition, hype trains. Everybody knows about hype trains. They want to get hype trains going, right? Well, you can actually turn off hype trains. I don't know why you would do that, but you could turn uh, hype trains off. 
and you can define how your hype train is set up. If you are newer, you just want to see hype trains come easier, then go ahead and leave this down to three events. So this is basically saying any any uh, cheer of at least 100 bits, any tier sub and any gifted sub would add to your account. So, and it has to happen within a five minute period. And if you get that, then you um, have your hype train going. Now you could raise this all the way up 25 saying you have to have 25 of those events in the same five minute period in order to get a hype train going. And honestly, you know, if I'm talking to affiliates here, the reason you do that level goals, you can make these medium hard, difficult. And all that does is that changes the level. Like I have it on easy. So four tier one sub 1600 bits is the goal for that level. If I went up to insane, it would say in that same period, 20 tier one subs and 10,000 bits is what you get in order to get up to that next level of the hype train. I think you can have five levels of a hype train before it takes a break. Whenever your hype train, there's a timer on it, right? So five minutes. And if you get to the end of that timer and you haven't met those same goals that you had for each level, then the hype train stops. And then you wait about an, anywhere between one and eight hours before it kicks off again. And you can customize emotes that people use for hype trains. And uh, so there you go. So that is all about your hype train settings. Now uh, down to leaderboards, this is just showing, this is basic leaderboards, top gifters, top cheerers, things like that. We've all seen those in all the widgets that we use. Moving down to ads. So this is uh, an interesting one. So people get a little bit confused about this. When you are coming up to affiliate, you don't have ads. It's, it's the best time in the world for anybody that's viewing your channel because they don't have to deal with ads and they don't have to subscribe at all. So that's great, right? But as soon as you make affiliate, you start getting pre-roll ads and pre-roll ads are the default type of ads that are gonna be shown on your screen. And what pre-roll ads mean is every time an individual person comes to your stream, they see an ad. No, no one else on the, on the stream sees it, but they see an ad. And that's the only ad that is shown, right? And I've had a few different streams where I've talked about how much money you get from ads. It's not a lot. So if you're only doing pre-roll ads and only for the people, and which are only for people that come to your channel the first time they come there, unless they leave and then come back, then you're not generating a lot of ad revenue. So one thing that people do is they disable pre-roll ads and they run their own ads. Now you can actually leave pre-roll ads on and run your own ads manually. It's up to you. But a lot of people, they don't want pre-rolls to happen because what they want when someone comes to the channel, they want them to just get right into it and enjoy what they're watching. So they turn that off, but pre-roll ads don't stay off. They don't stay off. So what you need to do is you need to make sure you're running manual ad breaks. Now, it's recommended, like think about what you like to, what you like to see if you have to watch ads. Um, if you're watching a TV show, you are going to see in a 30 minute show, they usually have about 22 minutes of actual show, leaving eight minutes of, of, of ads and credits and things like that. So you're probably seeing ads about every five to seven minutes on, on a TV show. People don't wanna see ads that frequently on, on Twitch or stream, anything streaming. So I wouldn't recommend doing it. However, the way that it works, the way that you can keep pre-rolls off is every 30 second ad break that you run will mean that your channel will be pre-roll ad free for 10 minutes. If you do a 60 second ad break, it's off for 20 minutes. And if you do a 90 second ad break, your pre-rolls stay off for 30 minutes. Anything above, it doesn't work above that. You can run two minutes, two and a half minutes, and three minute pre-rolls, I mean ads, if you want, but it's, you don't go any longer than 30 minutes without pre-roll ads. So keep that in mind. So if I were to run a 30 second ad, ad break right now, anyone coming to my stream for the next 10 minutes wouldn't have to see an ad at all for that time period. If I ran a 90 second one, they wouldn't see it for 30 minutes. I personally don't like running it every 10 minutes. I, I feel like that's way too frequent, especially when I'm not playing a game. If I'm actually doing this kind of content, you know, every minute that I'm not running an ad, sorry, every minute that I'm speaking and, and I don't have ads running, people can't see it. So that's not beneficial to them. 
there here's some information about the revenue sharing it's basically 350 per 350 us dollars cpm a cpm means per thousand people that watch it and the way that they break it out at least how they stated on here is it's broken out by by territories by geography by geographical regions there is also additional factors in here about like the type of content you run and whatnot in terms of like what your actual payout is going to be this is similar to youtube but youtube gets a lot more specific about how their pre-roll how their cpm so that is everything in the affiliate settings sec affiliate section but you're not done yet you're not done yet so let's go down to viewer rewards and this is another way to further engage your community and build your community. One of the things that people always talk about are channel points. So channel points are essentially like mini games that people can play, can use their channel points for. And people earn channel points by watching your channel. So you can turn channel points off if you want, but people like them. When you go into channel points, one thing you can do is you can rename them and you can upload your own icon for them if that's what you want to do. And then it gives you a little example of what they are. All this is doing is just customizing the look and name of your channel point. The big thing you want to do is you want to go into manage rewards and challenges. And this is going to show you all of the channel points that are set up. They have some default ones down here, and then they have some that they, that you can add on your own. You can actually add custom rewards. You can visit the, the large collection of channel points that they recommend to people. If you want, um, I haven't got too crazy with going in in here, but I do. I have added some ones in here. I have turned some on and some off. And here's a custom one that I created called Time to Go Code Wolf. I just mentioned Jay Brown Senpai redeemed that. And in this one, I attempt to murder Code Wolf Zero in game, depending on the game. If it's a game that's PvP, yeah, I will. I will try to do that if someone uh, donates. That. Someone uses that channel. That is how you use channel points. So if I, actually, let me see here. If I added a custom reward, I just want to show you. I could just, I'll just write test and I'll just put in some text, how many channel points it is, 50,000 channel points. And then I could add my own image or it would just use some kind of default or a color. And this is what it looks like. And then I would hit create and it's created. And that's literally all you have to do. And your channel point is there. You can delete it. You can edit it, you can disable it. You can do whatever you want to do. But this is about channel points. I highly recommend setting that up. People seem to like channel points. So go ahead and set that up. Going down to emotes, we did kind of go over this already. There was a link to it in the settings section. And drops are basically in-game things based on a game that are sponsored. That if you play this game and you have it enabled, people will see it and they can get specific items or just in-game stuff based on this game if you have that active. But that is all of the settings that you need to configure when you go become affiliate. Again, congratulations if you made affiliate. Job is not done. You gotta set all this up and you gotta keep doing whatever the hell it is you were doing that got you there.